Mm -hmm. It's the Morning Cryptos. My name is Mark Shepard. It is January 26th, and it is the 26th day of this current 90-day challenge to go deep into the Bitcoin galaxy of greed and grooviness and to learn, to learn, to learn, to learn, to learn, and to earn while we learn. So, today's headline, today's title is tentatively titled Slip Slide in Away or The Pause That Refreshes. Let's get to it. Start the music. So, just, uh, I cheated this morning. My... My, my normal thing is I like looking at the charts without having looked at them beforehand. But today, I don't know, I cheated. I cheated and I looked through everything. And everything looks like it's a little down, but it ain't like crashing down. A little out, but not like out of bounds out, right? Just uh, so let's look at the news. And I got a, I actually have an interesting news piece that I wanted to share with you. So uh, let me take this next sip and let's do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I make good coffee. I make really, really good coffee. Woo! All right. So, where was I? I was looking. Let's look at the news here first. And uh, I just clicked there. Okay, good. Now, let's hit refresh. Should we get an accurate thing? $10,525.33 for one single Bitcoin. It's cheap, people. It's cheap. Buy low, sell high. This thing's going to a million. It's going to a million. Get in now while you have a chance. <laughs> Don't miss out, right? That's 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 marketing hype. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyway, let's look at these headlines. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Ripple, IOTA, Litecoin, News. So yeah, you can click on that and learn all about things. Uh, Forbes, will the price of Bitcoin keep dropping? <laughs> yeah. It goes up and it comes down. It goes up and it comes down. I think we are having an, an experience of quieting, uh, at least around Bitcoin. And partly it's, in my humble, and it is really humble opinion, people, because I don't know a lot about a lot of things, but I do know this. When I buy Bitcoin, I can't move it anywhere. And I can't spend it anywhere. And... Yeah. However, all the other altcoins work just fine. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, cryptocurrency value slumps again after... Dot, dot, dot. We don't know. It's all excitement. After what? Okay. So, all right. Nothing particularly huge. Let's just type in Bitcoin news just in case there's some some something relevant... Bitcoin news, your sloppy Bitcoin drug deals will haunt you for years, from Wired. Uh, Lightning has a problem, people are already using it. Yeah, that's a problem, people are already using it. What is Bitcoin and why it still matters? Vogue. Okay, people, when Vogue runs an article about Bitcoin, you know, you know, public adoption is on its way, right? Okay, cool. Look, you know, I have friends who text me sometimes, okay? Just so you know. I'm an introvert, but I'm not a hermit, okay? I have friends. Yeah. Um, okay, so, okay, I don't know. Lightning has a problem. I think that might be worth a little dip, and Coindesk tends to have really short articles anyway. Bitcoin's Lightning Network has a problem. People are already using it. Fake money is boring. At least that's the contention of many micropayment enthusiasts whose impatience for the Lightning Network has led to an influx of real Bitcoin being transacted over the network. Even though developers caution people against doing it since it's still in the testing phase. The testnet just doesn't have the same adrenaline rush, representatives of VPN service TorGuard told Coindesk after announcing it would be accepting Lightning payments. And they're not the only ones. Blockstream launched a Lightning-only merchandise store using its own Lightning implementation. Sea Lightning and a Sea Lightning and a Lightning mainnet explorer suggests more than thirty-three thousand dollars in Bitcoin has been transacted via Lightning networks. The excitement is not hard to explain. 
The off-chain technology promises near instant transaction speeds with vastly reduced fees, and many enthusiasts believe using the network on the Bitcoin mainnet as opposed to on the testnet will speed up the time it takes to get the Lightning Network ready for prime time. I think it's time for Lightning Network to go live, even if it's still buggy, but this is the best way to harden it, one Twitter user wrote. It, yet using the network while it's still in development has not only led to confusion as to its readiness, but it's also caused several people to lose real Bitcoin funds. Because of that, Blockstream's decision has been criticized and others have been have called opening lightning channels with hundreds and thousands of dollars of Bitcoin crazy. In spite of persistent warnings, though, mainnet implementations of lightning already have over 205 nodes, 400, 548 channels at press time, no sign of stalling. Yet what, this moment, yet what this momentum is slowing, according to developers, is the rate at which lightning will be safe to use on the Bitcoin mainnet. All right. Recently, we've seen more and more users configuring their software for mainnet, some thinking that this will make Lightword, Lightning Network deployment happen faster somehow, distracting the devs, but it's not the case. In a recent interview, CEO of Lightning Labs, Elizabeth Stark, approximated the developer count on the Lightning Network to be as low as 10 individuals, a factor which, as detailed by Coindesk, could be slowing down the release of the tech. Perhaps due to the shortage, Lightning Labs has appealed to users to stop sending money over the system, stating... It has become an unnecessary distraction for our devs. A lot of people want to get on mainnet, and it's hard to tell them it's not quite ready and that they should test on testnet, said Alex Bosworth, a Lightning developer. I wouldn't recommend using mainnet unless you are explicitly testing and fully know what you're doing. All right, so on and on. This is actually a long article. So let's not forget that developers are the scarcest resource of all. So the bottom line is, people, Lightning, Bitcoin's Lightning Network it's not ready yet, but we are ready for it, and we're impatient as fuck <laughs> because it's so goddamn slow and so goddamn expensive right now, and it's been slow and expensive for like two years. Like, hello, people want it now. <laughs> All right. Just thought that'd be interesting. Other item of news. This is positive news. Uh, you might want to check this out. Uh, it's on ccn.com. African innovators are proving this teenage Bitcoin millionaire hotshot right. Um, the words of teenage Bitcoin millionaire Eric Feynman. By the way, I'm using the Brave browser. Look at these ads. You see there's no ad. It says advertisement. No ad. No ad. I like the Brave browser, people. Brave.com. Basic attention token. Uh-huh. All right. Um... A rare opportunity for young people. So essentially, uh, cryptocurrency represents the largest transfer of wealth our generation has ever seen. Never before have young people been able to change economic classes so quickly, says Finman or Feynman. I don't know how you pronounce it. So uh, evidently, African young people are starting to get into blockchain and they're starting to go, hey, you know what? I can be a part of the world global economy and I don't have to wait. So that's really cool. And I think it's hopeful and positive. And uh, there's another little quote in here. Um, Finman clearly explains the situation in most parts of Africa, a continent where the majority, where a majority of the political and industrial leaders are well past the age of youth, compared to their counterparts in other parts of the world. African youths have been left out of traditional developmental systems. Same applies to wealth opportunities. While there exists a few wealthy older citizens, the majority of the young people barely live on handouts. Um, so I think, and there's some exchanges opening in Africa, deep down, and this is the key right here, on his Twitter, Finman writes, deep down, everybody knows cryptocurrencies are the future. Even the bankers and Wall Street know it. The only debate is how long until it completely takes over. So that's good news, people. So I wanted you to have some good news before we just kind of looked at these markets today because these markets are down a little bit, but not by much, at least at this moment. And it's uh, it's, it's 8.05 this morning. I uh, slept in a little bit. I was out late. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be okay. We still have higher bottoms here. Um, we still may see lower prices, right? Um, however, today would not be a bad day if you're doing your dollar cost averaging to go to Coinbase and buy yourself 20 bucks of Bitcoin or a hundred bucks or whatever you can afford. Uh, I'm trying to only buy Bitcoin when it's, when there's a red day 
and I'm not too fussy about trying to get the absolute bottom. I'm just trying to get it at the close to the you know close to where it is on support. Um, so that may be what I do a little bit later is buy a little bit more Bitcoin. And uh, I'm again paying myself first. Uh, the way I started a year ago, February 7th, I think was my very first day to purchase a little bit of Bitcoin and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, just a little bit every day or a little bit every week, whatever works for you when it's down is the time to buy. And that's the rule. The number one rule for new people is you don't want to buy it when it's on one of these big green upswings. You want to buy it when it's down. And that's tricky because you don't always know, is it, is it down here and going farther or is it down here and holding? And we don't know. Is it down here and going farther or is it down here and holding? We don't know that. So you got to do the best you can and you got to take some kind of action. Otherwise, you're just standing on the sidelines. And you have to make sure that you're only playing with money that you can afford to lose so that you can sleep at night, right? Those are a lot of things that the average person, what the... Uh, what the CEO of UBS calls, you know, Main Street America, you know, uh, people who aren't grown-ups. That's what we children in the financial world have to learn. But you know what? We can learn it. We learned how to ride a bike, Dad. Don't you think we can learn how to handle our money? Huh? <laughs> so if kids in Africa can do this, why can't, why can't we do it here on Main Street? Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, let's grind through these real quick. It's it's pretty much the same thing all across the board. We got Bitcoin Cash down a little bit. We got Bitcoin Gold down a little bit. And again, Bitcoin Gold just just seems to hug this right where it is right now. Just this is its main support right here. Boom. It just just holding nicely on here. I don't know. I kind of like Bitcoin Gold <laughs> just from looking at the chart. Um, of course, have I done any research into the development team? No. Do I really know anything about it? No. So it's not one of my big long-term holds, but it's a chart. Let's go back to it. Sorry. It's a chart that's so sweet. It's just a beautiful chart. I mean, look at these nice pumps. You know, you can do some nice range trading. It's almost time to get in, maybe. Uh, there's, yeah, we need a little bit, this kind of room between the next pump so probably I don't know in a couple of days it might be a good time to buy a little bit just to just to play just to see what's going on uh, all right so dash a little bit down but the bottoms are still higher I mean this is not a this is not a crash at the moment it's just a little bit down down day and up day down day a couple up days a couple of down days a couple up days we're hanging in waiting for Chinese New Year to be done right it's just a little bit of a quiet time here like Lake Wobegon right? So it's all good. Uh, EOS. EOS is doing very well. And uh, let me see. I got an email. I don't get pictures anymore in my emails. The Brave browser cuts them out. I haven't figured out how to how to put them back in. Anyway, uh, Dawn 3.0 Alpha announcement. So one of the things you can do if you're interested in a coin and invested in a coin a lot of them have uh, mailing lists and you can get their latest updates they'll just email you and you can check in and essentially uh, EOS has uh, moved to their next level of code they were on Dawn 2.x and now they're they've moved to Dawn 3.0 so they are making progress and developers are developing on their test net and their they're making progress, right? So EOS is doing pretty damn well. And uh, that's one of my long-term holds. My only regret is I didn't buy more. <laughs> but every time I try to sell it, I'm like, no, I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to hang on. So that's one of my long-term holds, and we'll see how I do with it. Uh, Ethereum, down a little bit, but not too bad. Down but not out. You know what I mean? IOTA. I'm starting to think about buying some IOTA today. Because this looks pretty good. You know, but we don't really have any clear support here, but there obviously is some support. We have these these long wicks here. Um, let me draw a line because I haven't drawn a line in a while. So like right here, we have a pretty solid support level with these long this is as far as it's ever dropped, right? And so 
I don't think it's a bad price here. If it goes down a little more, even better. Uh, so trying to figure out what I can sell so that I can get me some more IOTA. I do have a decent amount, so maybe I'll just, I'm okay, right? Litecoin. I might buy some Litecoin over at Coinbase today. It's looking like, yeah, 172 bucks. I could, I think that's not a bad price for Litecoin. However, is it going down or is it going to hang? Is it going down, going to hang? And right here, right exactly at this price where it is right the second is a pretty decent place of support. I mean, you could, you could argue that it could go down as far as 135 and maybe you want to put some orders in down there. You know, I don't know, but um, after these big boosts, it's not unusual to see a kind of a long, slow refraction period. You know, it's it's like a breath in and then a breath out, right? I've said that before, but I think it bears repeating because I couldn't think of anything else to say. <laughs> so, people, Neo. Not bad, but also not a good time to get in because it's too high. All right. Uh, Omise say go. Not a bad time to get in. It's not that high. And Omise say go has some really good people on its team, including Vitalik Buterin. So this might be a project that holds its value. But right now, today, not a bad price. And just kind of look at our little whisker bottoms here. Right where we are. Still a pretty good trend line up, you know, and not a bad time to get in. I mean, we could make it, you know, if it drops down to this line, or maybe you could put an order in down here, a couple of orders, whatever. Um, and that's a that's something that I haven't done yet. Uh, you kind of need some either U.S. dollar tether or you need some Bitcoin to do that or Ethereum. Um, and I don't have any of those at the moment. <laughs> so that's why I'm back in Coinbase buying a little bit, buying a little bit every day. Um, and mostly it's a discipline and mostly it just feels good to be buying something. It feels good to like be buying at a decent price. Um, and ultimately we are all chasing good feelings. Just notice that everything comes down to, does it feel good? Right. And if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. And sometimes something feels good. And then later you're like, Oh, why did I do that? Right. So it's all about chasing good feelings, but in a way that's intelligent and sustainable and cohesive and coherent and energetically sound and uh, spiritually pure. <laughs> All right, let me say go. So quantum, look at quantum is really kind of hanging in. I like it and I think it's good. I think I, I would like to get more quantum. Uh, I actually bought more basic attention token yesterday. I had some dash in my Exodus wallet, and I just exchanged it right in my wallet. Boom. So that was fun. Hadn't done that in a while. Uh, not a bad time to get to some quantum. Uh, XMR Monero. Right on its line. Right on the line of support here. Look at this. Boom. Shazoopy. Sound effects are extra, people. No extra charge, though. But I mean, you can look at the wicks, and we got support here, and we also have support way down here. So if you really think it's going to drop, put in some orders down at like 250, 240, 220. Uh, if you think it's going to hang, if you think 300 is a good enough price, just get some, right? And again, that's not to be construed as investment advice. It's just the point I'm trying to make is buy low, sell high. We are in a beautiful pause. These pauses, I've experienced several of them now. Um, right before the Bitcoin cash hard fork, things were just dead. It was just like quiet. Nothing was happening. Uh, and that's when I got tangled up in Ponzi schemes. So be careful during this quiet times. Don't be impatient. This is a time to look for bargains, not Ponzi schemes. Stay out of those high yield investment programs, people, please, please, please stay out of them. Um, or, or do them. Do them early, do them fast, do them small, and get be done with it. Either way, all right? That's what I did. Um, so, uh, Monero's looking pretty good. And, uh, again, I think the privacy coins are going to be quite in demand, particularly when governments try to figure out how to tax every fart 
that you'd make on an exchange. Um, <laughs> Ripple! That's what I want to see. I want to see Ripple coming back. I want to see it coming down. I want to see Ripple come down, and I want to see it develop a sideways trading range. And it seems to be working on that. So I don't know if I would buy Ripple quite yet, but I'm looking at it. Uh, Zcash. Uh, same kind of a deal with Zcash. A little bit pricier than Monero at the moment. And also, people, you might want to check out Verge, because Verge is a newer coin, uh, and it's been pretty volatile. I haven't looked at it lately, but I'll, I'll check it out maybe today if I can remember something for more than three minutes, because I'm in my 50s. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Again, we're right down on support right here. Like, if you wanted to get yourself some Zcash, might not be a bad day to get it, but we don't know. Is it going to go lower? Is it going to hold? We don't know. And that's... It's called risk, people, <laughs> and and some people call it gambling, but it's not really gambling. It's there's an educated risk. It's a good project. Zcash is not going anywhere. It's well vetted. It's well, you know, documented that it has a group of people working on it who know what they're doing, right? So, uh, and we had a a little peak, a little flash peak, uh, way back here. And it's, where is it? Right on this level, right? This is this is one of those sweet spot levels that seems to kind of, you draw a line back and you go, wow, okay. It has been at this price multiple times and it's been below this price and above this price, but it's a, kind of right smack in the middle at the moment. That's kind of the way I look at it. Uh, let's look at my beloved little Cardano. Cardano, we don't have much of a charter. I'm using the US dollar tether chart. Uh, there are other charts, but I, I have to look at a U.S. dollar chart um, just to get my bearings. Uh, Cardano's hanging tight. It hasn't dropped. It hasn't risen. Uh, whenever it does come to the bottom of its range here, you might want to get some. I think Cardano is a long-term hold for me anyway. And uh, this is Cardano against Bitcoin holding nicely against Bitcoin. Uh, what does it look like against Ethereum? Holding nicely against Ethereum, but a little bit maybe lower against Ethereum. So you might want to use Ethereum to buy Cardano. So that's one thought to think. Uh, basic attention token against Bitcoin. Let's look and see how she's doing. She's doing, they doing. Uh, we have a nice kind of a sideways little range here. And again, even though basic attention token is somewhat up, look at this huge <laughs> cup and saucer deal, right? It has gone down and yeah... Back in December, you could have gotten this a nice sweet price, but it's come right back up to, you know, a, a pretty solid level. And if it levels off from here, that's cool. I think it's a, not a bad place. So yesterday I did get some more basic attention token. And I was like, where can I get some money? And so I, I found some money in my Exodus wallet. And that's really the way to do it right now. Scrounge around, find find fiat that you can afford to invest and find bargains that you believe in. And, you know, that's that's one way to get started, right? Um, or maybe that's, that's step two after you get into Coinbase and start buying a little bit every day or every week. Uh, and there are different levels. And the thing is, it's taken me a year to get to this level. And I think it's really healthy to say to yourself, you know, it's going to be at least a year and I'm going to keep learning and maybe two years I'm going to keep learning. And by year three, I could be really doing like, you know, you kind of give yourself time, give yourself at least as much as a college education takes, right? To, to be patient and to go, I'm going to learn and I'm going to learn and I'm going to learn, learn, learn and learn and earn and earn while I learn. And I may make mistakes, but I'm going to get in and I'm going to learn every damn day. So that's what I'm doing here in front of you guys. Let's look at a uh, um, couple of things. Let's look at Verge. See if I can remember. Which one was Verge? There we go. I have Verge against Bitcoin. Nicely down against Bitcoin. <clears throat> I think it's a good day to buy Verge. If you have Bitcoin, uh, not a bad day to buy Verge with U.S. dollars either. 
Uh, and I did pretty well with Verge. I did some some swing trading and range trading with Verge. I think I bought some here, sold it there. Um, and uh, so definitely check some Verge out. There's a, There was a lot of hype about it and some John McAfee stuff. And But check it out. See if it's a decent project. Look into it. Look in the team. See what's, what people are saying on Twitter, that kind of stuff. Um, and what else do we have here that I just want to check real quick? Uh, 10X. <clears throat> 10X is something that I'm, I don't know how long I'm going to hold it, but I'm definitely in on 10X. Uh, and I got some, I literally, there was a news item where they had lost their, uh, their credit card issuer so that, you know, the, they could be part of the whole Visa network. Uh, and that, they lost that, but they'd already been working on something else. And ultimately, their vision is much, much bigger than just a, a debit card that you can carry your crypto around with. But that is one of the key areas because, like, I was thinking, I want to travel the world. The only place I have money is in my, in my crypto accounts. You know, how do I travel using crypto? You know, so that's a real world problem that these guys at 10X are going to solve. And they have a really good team. And they have a CEO who is communicating what's going on. Uh, so definitely check out 10X. Those are some of my my favorites at the moment. And so that's it for today. Let's go back to Mama Papa Bitcoin, get ourselves back into the ground of Bitcoinness. Um, people, I don't think it's a bad time. I think it's a really good time. And I'm starting to feel like we have some solidity around this $10,000 mark. We have some price. I mean, it's already gone to 20. It's 50% discount. Think of it that way. And even if it drops a little bit more, you're still, you know, it has proven that it can go to 20. And particularly if they actually get the Lightning Network going and it actually works, wouldn't you have wanted to get Bitcoin at 10,000? when it goes back to 20 or 30 or 40 or 50, if that's possible. Um, and I think it's possible if it actually works, but it's, I don't think it's possible at the moment with the slowness and the unusability. And I think the development team is aware that the stakes are pretty high here. Uh, so that's it for today. hope you guys have a great day. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. This has been The Morning Cryptos. If you like this, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please ring that little bell. And if you like music, check out some of my other videos. And I am in the process of releasing a new CD and just waiting for some proofs that got lost in the mail. And you can actually download my new CD or listen to it at bandcamp.com. Just markshepard.bandcamp.com. The link is below. And uh, that's it, people. And I started trading cryptos to raise money for my music and that's what I continue to do and we're gonna we're gonna make some great music this year and uh, we're gonna rock it in the crypto world as well so peace grooviness over and out start the music <laughs>